Okay, so in this mini episode, we are going to be talking a little bit about environmental justice and um, the distribution of environmental harms. So, so a lot of East Boston is full of diverse populations. Um, In particular, we have traditionally been home to a lot of immigrants from all over the world, um, specifically Ireland, Italy, and Latin America in more recent years. What this means is that a lot of the people that live in East Boston have a lot of family ties that have maybe brought them over to the United States, and therefore they might have a more tight-knit community or support system within their neighborhood. Um, They might also not have access to a lot of the resources that the government makes available to um, people with legal resident status or um, that have citizenship and as a result that can be, um, it can be really difficult for people to have the money and the support to move to a safer place when environmental harms happen. Um, Along those lines, a lot of the environmental harms that East Boston residents are seeing are not because of actions that they have really taken on. So um, you might recognize that we have Logan Airport and while it's great to have the airport in the backyard, it makes traveling really easily, really easy. Um, It also is proportionately used less by East Boston residents than people maybe in the suburbs of Boston. And as a result, um, even though we breathe in a lot of the contaminants that airplanes and um, the traffic bring in because of the airport, we don't actually cause a lot of that. So we're breathing in a lot more than we should in relation to how much we use the airport. And its facilities. Um, Along those lines, we are located on the Boston Harbor, so any extra sewage that goes into the Boston Harbor will affect us and our health differently. Um, There are a lot of initiatives by the city to help clean up Boston and keep it clean. Um, Boston Harbor Now is a great organization that has done a lot of work to clean up the Boston Harbor, and a lot of that stuff that was really toxic and in the harbor um, was not necessarily a um, the fault of people living in East Boston or these coastal communities. What that means is that, um, again, East Boston residents were disproportionately affected by these causes that they hadn't necessarily contributed to at the same rate of people that could go to their homes in the outsides of the city. And that is really unfair. And the same thing is happening now with climate change. So like I said a little bit earlier, um, East Boston residents don't contribute as much to greenhouse effects in the city as um, some of the suburban neighborhoods do and maybe some people with access to larger homes apartment living tends to be um, a lot more energy efficient because it has a lot of barriers so that um, energy stays within and heat rises so the higher you are in your building with proper insulation the warmer it tends to be and the less energy you need to keep it warm Um, and this means that we are more energy efficient usually and we use less space so we have to heat up less space Um, And because we're so close to the city, a lot of people in East Boston do use the public transport system, which again is another way that we are helping actually reduce our consumption of um, fossil fuels and contributing even less to the greenhouse effect that will end up affecting um, climate change and our climate effects that we'll see like sea level rise. Unfortunately, other areas of the country and state Um, and even the city use more than they should or more than they really are entitled to and we bear the negative effects of that. So a lot of East Boston homes um, that have been built a long time ago are at risk of flooding. Um, Neighborhoods like Orient Heights are at risk um, or the Jeffreys Point area 
all of those neighborhoods are at risk of flooding when they may not have had as big of an impact on climate change or um, the reasons why flooding is occurring. Um, like I said, these populations that live in East Boston tend to have less resources and less of a political voice. So they might not have as strong ties to um, people that have the ability to make really important decisions to, as in regards to our health and our well-being. And that can be really difficult because like I said, we are the ones that are living with the effects of climate change. And if we don't have the power to decide what happens where we live, how we deal with that, and how we can stop that from happening, it can be really, really, really disempowering and frustrating for a lot of different reasons. However, there are a lot of ways that you and I can get involved in helping to restore some of that um, inequality and helping to make sure that we do. Even though there are a lot of reasons to be really frustrated with the way that we have to deal with climate change and it's really unfair that even though people in our neighborhood didn't necessarily cause a lot of the climate change that we're seeing because they used less energy or they rode their bikes more or they lived in smaller spaces or they just didn't fly as much all of those reasons that make east boston residents contribute less to climate change and um, the burning of fossil fuels even though we use less of them it's really important that we help redistribute power and um, feel empowered in our ability to enact change to um, again keep us healthy and able to live in our neighborhood um, it's really important that we keep pressing on elected officials and um, local companies to and corporations so that they know that we care about these things and that we know what's happening and um, organizations like the Harbor Keepers um, Eastie Farm, Pierce Park Sailing Center, NOAA, Boston Harbor Now are working to keep the neighborhood educated on all of these topics and really help motivate and organize the community so that we can have our voices heard and really, really um, have an, a lasting impact on the decisions that get made that then will impact our ability to continue living in East Boston in a really safe and productive way, um, in a way that can continue to happen for many, many decades and maybe even a century or two more um, so that our grandkids and our great grandkids can continue to take advantage of the Boston Harbor and the really, really amazing cultural aspects that the community has to offer. Yeah, and climate resilience really comes into play here because we wanna make sure that we have adapted and that we have mitigated as much as possible so that all of this can happen. Um, and it's really important that we continue to read up on the city's plans and really press the city to make sure that the plans are in line with what we want and the visions that we have for how to continue living in East Boston and preparing for these um, changes that will come with sea level rise.